Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and gentlemen, ladies and ladies, pre-ops, post-ops, you get the idea. This is a show for all of you out there who maybe, shall we say, play for the other team. In 2013, there is no reason that you shouldn't be able to marry who you want. This is a very special episode for all my friends who happen to be here. Welcome, everyone. I'd like to devote an episode to faith and religion and how it relates to the gays. Should we let the gays get married? Has the LGBT movement gained tremendous traction because most of us have a couple of gay friends? Is it because Chris Colfer from Glee is absolutely adorable? Yes, yes, and yes. We also have Stefan here. While fabulous shows like Glee and Will and Grace are helping the gays cement themselves in our culture, we've gotten to know our gay friends as people who are just like us, except for the fact that, well, they're gay. We're starting to get it now. You know, not 10 years ago, when many of us came across someone who just so happened to be gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender, they would say, oh, does that mean they can come over and do my curtains? Today that tone is much less confused. Someone says, hey, I'm gay, the response is generally, uh, Right on, man. Looking back, it is an amazing shift that we've seen in such a short period of time. But something else is happening in the debate about same-sex marriage. God, the Bible, and sin have all been noticeably absent from the dialogue in the past couple months. With the exception of pastors like Robert Jeffreth, there are churches out there who are coming around because it's good business. A number of modern churches out there now embrace those in the gay community, and that is most excellent. But nevertheless, the so-called gay verses are still in the Bible, so that leaves the church in quite a pickle, if I may, since I suppose it's not possible to amend the Bible. Here, I'll put the gay verses on the screen for you to read. So more and more, the biblical argument just doesn't resonate with the public. We've gotten acquainted with our homosexual brothers and sisters, and we have a better understanding. So why is this still an issue? Don't we have more important things to worry about? Apparently not. In place of the being gay is a sin argument, we're hearing things like, the family unit depends on a man and a woman, or we are messing with 2,000 years of history, or even, if two moms or two dads will warp a child for not having a normal upbringing. Well, the thing is, there is no data for this. Thank God they've ditched the gay people will raise gay kids argument, that is just silly. Another good one is when they say the sanctity of marriage is at stake and it must be protected. <laughs> you tell that to your friend the divorce lawyer and see what he says about that. Marriage is already a farce of an institution. Straight people and Las Vegas screwed it up long before the gays had anything to do with it. Let me further address the male and female parent argument. My childhood was abnormal. I grew up above a funeral home, albeit I had a dad and a mom. Growing up and sometimes still, people ask me if it freaked me out, you know, growing up above dead people. The answer is no. I didn't know the difference. It was just normal to me. Part of the day-to-day -day life of our family, it was just running the funeral home. Definitely abnormal by most people's standards, just like having two moms or two dads, but for me, it was just life. And it, it wasn't even an inconvenience, and the same will be true for kids with same-sex parents. Yes, I'm talking about the gays a lot, but this includes lesbians, transgender people, and of course bisexuals. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being bi. Sometimes you want the pull, sometimes you want the whole. The point is that everyone in those groups are human beings, and part of being a human being is embracing everyone. It's not about religion or tradition, and we all know that ick is not a compelling argument. It's about doing what's right. Some say that being gay is not natural, and that's false. Scientists have observed homosexual behavior in dragonflies, vultures, elephants, dolphins, giraffes, and many other species. So to say that being gay isn't natural is to not know what the hell you're talking about. Slowly but surely, people are coming around to the idea. 
So why can we not accept this? Why can we not choose to do the right thing by our fellow man and move on? The fundamental misunderstanding of who gay people are is something that we're slowly overcoming. Some people are just homophobic, and the causes of homophobia are vast, but mostly due to lack of education. The sun is indeed setting on this mentality, and homophobia is unacceptable, and those that harbor those views are quickly becoming irrelevant. That's right, if you're not on board with gay marriage, the time will soon come when you will not be taken seriously intellectually. Since this is such a huge issue, you will be considered obsolete in the marketplace of ideas, because you will have everything so fundamentally backwards. Which brings us back to the Bible. The gay verses are in there no matter what. So as a Christian, how do you justify your support of the gays if the foundation of your faith, the Bible, is flawed? You can build a big, beautiful house, but if its foundation isn't sturdy, it will certainly crumble. So while the same-sex marriage debate is not over, I'll give away the ending. Depending on what survey you look at, it's been found that 70-80% to 80 of us millennials support gay marriage. And with those kind of numbers, that means it will happen. It's only a matter of time. Not far down the road, and let's face it, it'll probably be a shiny and bedazzled road, we won't call it gay marriage anymore. We'll just call it marriage. So whether you're a Christian, a Jew, atheist, Buddhist, Muslim, or whatever, isn't helping your fellow man create his or her own happiness one of the greatest things and one of the most noble things we can do? This episode is getting a little long, so I'll wrap it up. I just want to give you a friendly word of warning if you, if you choose to get married. Don't screw it up. Along with marriage could come stress, divorce, and alimony. Yes, you could er inherit all the problems that us straight people have, but nonetheless, you're going to be equal. And all of that, including a lifetime of happiness, will be on the table for you. The most important thing is that you will have that choice. And that, everyone, is the American way. So until next week, thank you so much for watching.